Well, this all should have been taken care of when you got notice yesterday, Mr. Strickland. It's very disappointing that you or your office didn't call and make us aware or try to get a different time. I feel like that's. Your Honor, respectfully, um, I, I appreciate that. And uh, it was our due diligence. We're trying to make it all work. But given the fact it wasn't be another time that trial is set for Monday and with all the things. Going if, if Mr. Strickland, I'm going to just kind of give you a little heads up and warning to quit saying respectfully before you say things that really are kind of disrespectful. You could have called yesterday and we could have made a different time today. All of our time is very important. And the fact that you didn't call and say, hey, he's got an appointment. Can we do it at a different time? Then that's not, in my opinion, professional, respectful. Sixty-eight, eighty. Welcome back to Time Serve, the channel that scans the docket so you don't have to. I'm Phil, it's Friday, and this gentleman started way too early partying for the weekend in Wyandotte, along with several other people who looked very drunk in their court appearances. Then we have cases out of Texas, Kansas, and a main event that you are going to enjoy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe, set your notifications to all, and never miss the daily docket. Court is now in session. Let's roll, nerds. Okay, we're going on the record in the matter of the city of Wyandotte versus Michael Jump, 232003A and B and C. And appearance, counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shepke appearing on behalf of my client. At this time, we consent to the matter being heard via Zoom. As to the arraignment, we waive formal reading. My client stands mute. All right, thank you. And Mr. Jump, your name for the record, please. Michael Christopher Jump. All right. <clears throat> Sir, the court's going to waive the formal reading. Enter plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment. And we're going to schedule this matter for a pretrial on August 29th at 10 o'clock in the morning. <sighs> Ms. Carter, you can stay muted, please. I'm and counsel asked to bond. Your Honor, my client has a strong family support system. He currently lives with his parents. He's looking for gainful employment. He indicates he's not on probation or parole. We would be respectfully requesting uh, leniency when determining the appropriate bond. He has assurances to this court that he will appear at any and all future court dates. He'll strictly comply to any and all provisions ordered by this court. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Jump, you're muted, please. I'm not currently working, Your Honor. Why not? I, I just haven't found an employment here. I, I just returned from Las Vegas not too long ago, and I'm going to live here now. I just don't have employment yet. Okay, sir. Um, I need some more specifics. Not too long ago. Is that as in two weeks ago or two years ago or two months ago? What does that mean? What was this? I'm sorry. How long ago here. did you move? How long ago did you move back from Vegas? In three months. Three months. Okay. So do you live in Lincoln Park or do you live in Trenton? I live in Lincoln Park. Okay. And you've been back here. Why did you come back to Michigan? I um yeah, just to stay with my family, they're getting old. It's, I just left the relationship. I, I just came back because I wanted to. You came back not even having any employment, sir. Correct. Okay, so how do you support yourself? Who do you live with? I live with my parents. I just received a lawsuit. I have money. I'm not broke. <laughs> Cheryl Carter, stop unmuting, please. You're interrupting my record. 
And are you currently on probation for all you were, sir, whether in Michigan, Nevada, or any other state? Where? No, Your Honor. No. Have you ever failed to appear in court for anything, sir? Long time ago in Nevada, I did. But I, I ended up settling it. Okay. And all right, sir. If you were to test what's in your system, excuse me. If you were to test today, what is in your system? Uh, nicotine. Anything else? What? Anything else? No. What's going on in Allen Park? Are you out on bond in Allen Park right now? Yes. And what is that for? Uh, same thing, I think. Resisting, obstructing, and disorderly conduct? In no, no. I, I, I'm not sure exactly. It was something like that, though. Okay. All right, so you're out on bond. In the Allen Park. When's your next court date? I, I have to go there and talk to them. What does that mean? You have to go there and talk with them. Have you already been I'm not, Yes, I got to go quash a warrant, I think. I, I think I missed my court date. Okay, so I asked if you ever failed to appear, and you said only in Nevada. I was mistaken. Okay, sir, you don't have a job right now, so what is so difficult to pay attention to your court dates? I got to do better, Your Honor. You're correct. Based upon the fact, and is uh, one of your conditions, sir, that you're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs while you're on uh, bond? I think it, I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay. Sir, you need to start being more aware. Yes, Your Honor. How old, how, how old are you? 45. You're about to be 46. Correct. Oh, your birthday's on your next court date, so that should be easy to remember, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Well, the court's going to indicate based upon the nature of the charges, based upon the fact that Mr. Jump is currently out on bond for similar charges that he just um, incurred in July, July 25th. The court is going to indicate a $5,000, 10% bond. In the event you post bonds, so you're not to be released without an alcohol tether, and that's through the Wayne County Jail. You have to be asked to consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. What is that, sir? I have, four, I have $400 on me. Can I do that? Five thousand ten percent plus an alcohol tether through the Wayne County Jail. Thank you. We'll see you back on August twenty ninth. Thank you. We're going to go off the record. Okay. Thank um, you, Your Honor. I'll return uh, to the breakout. Okay. Room. And so, um, let's see, Mr. Shum let's see, who's this next? Who's the next one, Mr. Shumke? Um. Your Honor, let me pull that file. I'm sorry. Uh, it was hard to hear. It's uh, Natasha, and her last name starts with an A. Azar. Azar, yes, that's correct. All right, thank you. All right, we are on the record in the matter of the city of Windup versus Natasha Azar, 232004. And, Counsel, your appearance, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Shemke, appearing on behalf of my client. This time, we consent to the matter being heard via Zoom. As to the arraignment, we wait for more reading. My client stands mute. All right, ma'am, your name for the record, please. Go Your name for the record, please. Sasha and Paul Azar. All right. <clears throat> the court's going to wait for a reading. Enter plea of not guilty for purposes of the arraignment. Schedule this matter for pretrial August 29th at 10.30 a.m. 
And counsel asked to bond. Your Honor, my client's not on probation or parole. She indicates that she uh, has a uh, residence that she can return to and that she will appear at any and all future court dates based on the nature of the case being a misdemeanor level and her assurances to the court that she will strictly comply with terms and conditions. I would be respectfully requesting consideration for a personal bond. Thank you, Judge. All right, Ms. Azar, where do you work? I don't work, but my mother has, or my mother's boyfriend owns ANS. Okay, so if you don't work and somebody else owns a company, what is that relevance? What is what? <clears throat> what is the relevance of somebody else owning a company? Why don't you work? I don't have a job at all, but my mom and her boyfriend, they live with me. Like we all live together. Okay, ma'am, you still haven't answered my question. You obviously don't have a job. You said you don't have one. Why not? I just never got employed. Just never put in an application. I'm sorry. You never got employed. Why? I because I just didn't put in an application. How old are you? Twenty-one. And you've never had a job. I had one for about two months. Do you go to school? Yes. And where do you attend school? Henry Ford. And how how many credits are you taking? I'm I'm taking three classes. It's just started. Okay, are they three credit hour classes, two credit hour classes, four credit hour classes? They're gonna be there's two three hour classes. There are two what? I said two three hour classes. It's pre med and forensic science. Okay, so you have six credit hours you're taking? Yes. Okay, what's hap what if you're in a test, what's in your system? Uh, weed. Anything else? No. You're sure about that? Yeah. What's happening with your matter out of Lincoln Park? Felony drugs, misdemeanor drugs, misdemeanor assault from August 7th. Um, I have court for them, but I never got my court date. They didn't want to press contact. Yet? Did you contact the court to see when your court date was? They said I'd be getting something in the mail. Okay. And Hey, Ma'am, you would not test positive for any other anything else. No cocaine, crack, suboxone, nothing. Uh, maybe coke, but that's it. Maybe coke. Okay. No, you wouldn't test positive for any meth. No. All right, <clears throat> ma'am, um, given the fact that you have pending charges out of Lincoln Park um, <clears throat> for the same offenses or similar offenses, the court's going to indicate a $5,000, 10% bond. In the event of post bond, ma'am, I'm sorry, what's that? I said, okay. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. You'll be subjected to random testing. Are you posting bond today, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Before you leave, you're to stop at probation so you can get set up with your random testing. Okay. All right, we'll see you back on the 29th. Thank you. Thank you, Judge.
All right, off the record. All right, is there one more, right? Okay. We're going to put why not jail back in breakout room eight. Okay, Mr. In the case at the time of the last hearing, so as to warrant continuance to today's date, Ms. Ridgeway, can you update the court from the perspective of DCF? Um, yes, Your Honor. I, th I think the best way to put it is, wow, we have a problem. Okay. Um, Mr. Kingsley was paying by income withholding order. Um, however, on July 27th, DCF received an income tax refund from the IRS in the amount of $35,929. That paid his case in full and resulted in the termination of the income withholding order. However, when I saw that payment, I became extremely suspicious because Mr. Kingsley has no history of employment that would lead me to believe that a $35,000 income tax refund was warranted. Uh, I did some urgent, and, and Your Honor, I just I discovered this on Wednesday as I was preparing for court. I did some urgent checking to make sure you know that my computer didn't have a problem. And I have verified with the IRS that they did actually send us that money. Uh, but as soon as they find out that they probably made a big mistake, they are going to demand that money back. Unfortunately, my verified with the IRS that they did actually send us that money. Uh, but as soon as they find out that they probably made a big mistake, they are going to demand that money back. Unfortunately, my called her dozens of times since then, and I get uh, her voicemail is full and not accepting messages. I have emailed her. Uh, I've had other state employees try to call her thinking maybe she's avoiding my phone number. So maybe using a different phone number might result in contact. And that has been unsuccessful. Now, I spoke briefly with Mr. Kingsley about this matter on Wednesday. Um, I was, I, I did not have a lot of time to speak with him. And I, I told him we could discuss this further at, at today's hearing. Okay. Um, but what I can say right now, Your Honor, is that I have no debt to collect because it appears to have been paid in full, but unless Mr. Kingsley can explain why he was entitled to almost $36,000 from the IRS, um, you know, my debt is actually not paid in full. All right. Mr. Kingsley, is there anything, sir, that you would like to I offer? Have, like I said, I just have it on Facebook. You know, they, I talked to some late, some late on the phone. They said it was, it was, a, it was a real check. So he puts it sending out to the mail. It was a real check. Right. That's what they told me on the yes. It, it, Mr. Kingsley, who is they? IOS people. Some lady, I don't know who it was, it was on the bureau check. They did a bureau check with me. They said, and I asked them, I said, it's a check real. They said, yes, it's a real check. And do you know how you contacted them? It's on Facebook. And did you provide them with pay stubs or any? any no. They, did, they told me to take a picture of my ID, my social security card, and take a picture of me, and that's what they did. That's all they did. They, they, then I had to do an ID, stuff about ID, stuff, and take, take a picture, and they, it went through, and they called me on, on ID, did a video chat with me, and they said it was a real check. That's all I know. Well, it, it, it is, appears to be real money from the IRS. The problem is, what right did you have to get that money? I don't know. They didn't say nothing. It says like, a, I guess, like a loan or something. Or credit or something. That's all they said. Did, did you tell them that you were an employer? Uh, they didn't ask me. They didn't, they didn't ask. But they told you it was a loan. It was like something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, when I, I've been texting, I got the number, but I've been texting them on it. 
and uh, they haven't been texting me back. I don't know if this could possibly have anything to do with these circumstances, but I know Mr. Kingsley has been over the long arc of this case, at least sporadically employed with uh, W-2 employers. And I don't know all the intricacies, but I wonder if there was any conclusion that he was entitled to earned income credits for some period of years, which could manifest itself in a number similar to the one you're explaining. I mean, I have no idea if that's the logic. And I don't know, Mr. Kingsley, um, I'm not implying that uh, the people you were interacting with were uh, anything other than what you believe them to be representatives of the IRS. But from the perspective of the court, um, the idea of you know holding up identification paperwork and social security cards on a Facebook video, uh, it just doesn't sound what I would have expected anyway in terms of taxpayer interaction with the IRS. So I would just encourage you to use due caution in uh, interacting and releasing any of your important personal data. Um, I don't know, Ms. Ridgeway, if this makes sense to you, and I'm happy to hear from each of you as to a potential way forward. But what I would like to do would be to continue this case for 60 days in hopes that if there is some uh, fly in the ointment, so to speak, in terms of the issuance of that check, that might come uh, to light uh, in the meantime. And if for whatever reason it is indeed exactly uh, issued as it was supposed to have been, then I think that changes the character of what we do going forward if the case is indeed uh, paid in full at that point. Does that make sense from DCF's perspective, or did you have some other uh, suggestions or concerns? No, Your Honor, that, that does make sense. I mean, it, it, my big concern, well, first of all, this money did come from the IRS. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, uh, I have verified that. I don't know. Uh, we received Mr. Kingsley's uh, income tax refund in 2020 um, when we also received his um, COVID stimulus money, but I believe that is the only time we have ever received an income tax refund for him. Uh, it, you know, the payment history I show for the last 11 years, you know, while he may have had some uh, actual em employment, um, it hasn't been significant enough uh, really for it. Mr. Kingsley, when was the last time you filed your tax return? Oh, not, I haven't done it lately. And I, I know you did in 2020 because we yeah, got, that's the last, that's the last that you, I did it. And I did it, job at that time. Yeah. Did you do it yearly before then? Oh, nope. okay. And, and do you have children in your home? Have you nope. for the last 12 years? Nope. So, Your Honor, I, it, it, I'm not a tax attorney, but I believe earned income credit <laughs> requires a, children in the home. Right. Um, if if this is a loan, if if Mr. Kingsley, you know, led the IRS to believe that he was a small businessman, I know the those loans are available. Um, I think that's what my what my lady did for me. I don't know what she done. She okay. helped me to do it. Well, in in which case, that's. If, if that's the situation, then now Mr. Kingsley owes the IRS money rather than owing child support money. My, my concern is that the IRS is going to change its mind. And since DCF has already distributed the money, the state of Kansas has to repay the IRS out of the taxpayers' coffers. So I have some people with contacts directly with the feds. I think a 60-day continuance would give us the opportunity to verify whether or not this is, is legitimate. And if it is, then yay, Mr. Kingsley's done with us. Okay. Um, 
if, if it isn't, then, you know, we, we have a whole nother set of, of issues. And, and please understand, Mr. Kingsley, I, I'm not saying you're, you tried to do something intentionally wrong. I, I think you intended to do the right thing with all of this. It's just that I worry that there may have been some big misunderstanding. Okay. All right. Well, with all of that in mind, uh, I'm going to look ahead here to October 20, uh, 2023. Uh, at um, Actually, Ms. Ridgeway, this would... Uh, move it a little further out, but would you have any objection if the court were to use November 3 instead of October 20? No, that would be fine. All right. Uh, we'll do that then November 3, 2023 at nine o'clock. And Mr. Kingsley, we'll look forward to seeing you back here then. Thank you, sir. Right. Mr. Kingsley, if, if you could maybe call the IRS and ask them for copies of documents. I've been texting them. Don't get me wrong. I got the number. I've been texting them and you know, thanks to what's going on. And I texted them the other day, find out if the check was real, and they haven't texted me back yet. Okay. Well, it was real. It just came to me instead of you. That's yeah, because I've been I got yeah, I've been texting them, hon. Like I said, I texted them the other day. Yeah, I I said is the check real. They haven't texted me back yet. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you could maybe even just call the IRS. I'm sure there's a toll-free number somewhere to call. And, and ask them to send you, to mail you copies of, of the paperwork. And then you, if you could provide that to me, that'd be fabulous. I see what I can do. I have to go to work, so. Okay. That's, yeah. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank yep. you, Mr. Kingsley. Yep. I'm trying. Thank you. The Sally port. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, judge, in my... 28 years as a child support attorney, never. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't heard of anything like that either. That, that was unusual, and I'll be interested to see. You and know, I'll happened. be honest with you. I'm thinking, wow, I might just happen to have a small business uh, running out of the basement of my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I recognize. Wow, that's that's an interesting situation. So, um, yeah. is uh, And you're not wearing a tie. And you're also not wearing a suit, and he's yeah, here for put on my blazer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can join. <laughs> I think and he's Judge, talking to me. Oh, and Judge, this is um, Mr. Grabber's trying to read the motion. Um, we were trying to get him pulled from today, but we well, have no I, objection. I read the motion. I've signed the order, and I'm going to. I guess sign or I guess technically for for purposes of first appearances, Mr. Grabner, I'm putting him on pretrial release, but he's actually going to be transported to a baby behavioral. A judge, I would just ROR him so they can take him because pretrial. <laughs> hey, Mr. Thomas. Hi. Sir, you're fully court charge uttering forged check. You understand that charge? Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. That's true, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Thomas. Based on your application, I find you do qualify for the services of the public defender's office. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any question about that? Yes, sir. Bond set at five thousand on the uttering force check. The court date's going to be on September the 18th at nine o'clock. No contact with the alleged victim. In case 23-350 and 23-2643, I'm signing warrants for violation of probation. Good luck, sir. I think this, this case happened before that. Uh, judge, so here's what happened. I spoke to the case agent, who I guess was in an interview room with him just uh, a few hours, maybe an hour. And Judge, when you say we're both ready, ready? holding, right? Holding that bond. I just want to make sure. I mean, holding. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm writing it right. <laughs> No, no. When I revoke, I'll, I'll tell you something. When that day comes, you let me know. No, oh, you're good. Come back. I'll be name. wearing hot pink. I'll be I'll be wearing hot pink before that happens. All right, is this Mr. Foy? Okay. So you're fully court on failure to appear for molesting a vending machine. 
and a failure to appear for a violation of pretrial hearing in front of Judge Grant. Yeah, it sounds bad, doesn't it? I, I, that long pause. You didn't like that, did you? All right. So, Judge Grammer has already set your bonds on the molesting a vending machine. See, it's a new age. You got to ask the machine if it wants to be touched. I mean, it's just a there's a lot there's a lot of steps to the process. But in that charge, Judge Grammer set your bond at a thousand dollars on the. Failing to appear for the violation of probation hearing, he set your bond at $7,500. Your court dates are going to be August 21st at 1 o'clock on the molestation charge and August 23rd at 8.30 on the VOP. Good luck, sir. Next step to your right. And, Your Honor, because I Next. need to take over if it's our argument from um, number 10, Mr. Beecher, he's already sitting in the jail on other charges anyways. There's no probable cause. The CSO is already working on it. So I'd ask to return right, so to tomorrow. Okay. Bring them back tomorrow. Second. <laughs> All right. Step to your right. They're going to return tomorrow. Lie. You're not even say anything. It's the best way. Red X, sir. Say, yes, sir. State yeah. your name. Springer, last name, Thomas, first name. All right, Mr. Springer, last name, first name, Thomas. Yes, sir. You're back. You're for the court are charged with battery on a law enforcement officer, battery on a law enforcement officer, and resisting officer without violence. You understand the charges? I do, I do not understand the charges because that's not exactly what happened. Well, no, no, no. That's a different issue. That's a, actually, I, gotcha. I would argue that's a completely different yeah. issue. I just okay, think I gotcha. that was, you understand what they charged you with. Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Not entirely. I got paperwork, but okay. I haven't advised rights. Today, I just got paperwork. Really okay. No advisor or any rights. No, sir. Miss Fambro, you aren't telling me? No, Mr. Quick did. And on this one, oh, okay. was never read by Miranda rights. That's a violation of law itself because it's, it's supposed to be a felony. Misdemeanors, they don't have to. They never read by Miranda. Actually, <laughs> Absolutely 180 degrees from the truth. They don't have to read your Miranda rights when they arrest you for anything. I would know. They before it tells me otherwise. It tells me. Oh, oh, told Mr. Beers, no. Felonies, yes. No. If they don't want to. They don't have to. I guess they don't have to if you say so. Miranda rights are only applicable if they're going to interrogate you after they put you in custody. It, oh, is, a fiction, it is a fiction of TV and movies that you have to be read your Miranda rights when you're arrested. Oh, yeah, a lot of that. Uh, okay. Well, okay. you're an angry Santa Claus, so. No, I'm okay. Uh, got a court date set for when? The court date's going to be September the 14th at 9 o'clock. Your bonds are 15000 on the battery on first responder or law enforcement, 15000 on the battery on first offender, first responder or law enforcement, and 2500 on resisting without. Good luck. Thank you. Right, step to your right to the T. We're here. Yes, on the team. Nancy. Next. Here you go. State your name. My name is Malachi Tristan Cade. Mr. Cade, you fully court to aggravate assault with a deadly weapon. You understand the charge? Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advice of your rights. Is that true? Yes. Got a copy of your paperwork? Do you have a copy of your paperwork? Were you advised of your rights today? You were? Yes, That's weird. What is In it? the same room at that. Uh, oh. Not you. <laughs> All right. Mr. Cage, based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the services of the public defender's office. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender representative so you have an attorney now. You understand that? Yes, sir. Deputy, come on, history. I got him on the ROR for um, no valid and Alabama 21. Fraudulent use of a credit card with the FTA on that. That's drop. That's your arrest history. Oh. Okay. What part of Alabama are you from? I'm from uh, Levi, Alabama, which is not far from here. It's like um, it's right there, close to Dothan. And yes, yeah, the case is still open. By the way, I just found it in Benchmark. If you need the case number. 
I do need a case number. Um, um, as Deputy Chairman said, it's an ROR. It's in your division 233163 CTMA. He has pre-trials with you at the end of the month. 3163? Yes. 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 Okay. He does All have right. the PD appointed already on that case. On the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, bonds 100,000. No contact with the alleged victim. No firearms. Court date's going to be September the 28th at 9 o'clock. And on 233163, I'm revoking your release. Wait, my bonds 100,000? You don't have to worry about it. I revoked your release, so you're held out. So don't worry about step, posting it. Step, step to your right to the team. You're welcome. Right next sir. State your name. Zachary Rogers. And just for the record, he, 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 he. is the same. Is the same. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> No, his is actually listed in the complaint, Judge. I read it. Okay. Um, his his involvement was very clear, but he is already held without in a bunch of other trafficking mm -hmm. cases, and he be I believe he has private counsel in those cases. I'm trying to confirm it's not. Yes, he has Brian Barnes, so I don't, and that was his last court date was um, July 13th, so a month ago, so he'd have to fill out an agency application, I believe. <laughs> All right, Mr. Rogers, are you planning on hiring Mr. Barnes for this as well, or are you going to apply for a public defender? I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Okay. okay. I'm going to set you a monetary bond at 10000 <laughs> Court date is going to be September the 14th at 9 o'clock or sooner if you have an earlier court date already. Sir, oh, thank you. Right, step to you right to the T. Deputy Chairman, do we... Smith is over at the courthouse. Uh, do we even need to address a no contact with the co-defendants? Because I'm assuming... The jail has already addressed it with all of them. I'm sure. I'm sure they're gonna. They're gonna do the keep separates on their own. And then, Your Honor, I know Mr. Smith is somewhere at the courthouse. Um, for the record, he was the one who was gonna actually have to be returned tomorrow, anyways, because his is also not establishing probable cause. Um, though I guess, let me see. He's at the courthouse, but it looks like uh, he is set for jury trial. They're handling a motion. It looks like. Well, they'll so, bring him back tomorrow. Okay. Just even okay. sleep tomorrow. I just got excited and jumped the gun. <laughs> All right, Mr. Weehunt, you're for the court charge of possession of meth, possession of paraphernalia, and a violation of probation for littering. You understand the charges? Yes, sir. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork advising your rights. Based on your yes, application, sir. unless you do qualify, I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? <laughs> All right, sir. Bond set at five thousand on the on the meth, one thousand on the paraphernalia, and you're held without bond on the VOP. Your court date will be September the fifth at nine o'clock. Good luck, sir. All right, step to your right. When the light comes on, sign next. Laving house, relax. Face the TV and state your name. David Lavinghouse. House. Lavinghouse, House, you're for the court charge of child abuse. You understand the charge? Oh, uh, yeah. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advice of your rights. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, I requested a lawyer today. Everybody brought it. What do you call it? Yeah. It's based uh, on your application. It's based on your okay. application. I find you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? Um, no, sir. Don't talk about your case. Floyd, we should make that a meme. I don't, I've never been in this situation. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. What's Deputy, Wait and talk to your lawyer about it. No, his case. case. All right. Well, I mean, I can. The, if I don't get out to work within five cynic, days, the cynic in me would tell you that there's some things you could have done different, but I'm not going. We're not going to get into that. Right now. I'm just going to set you a bond and tell you that you got no contact with your kid. Bonds fifty thousand. Four days, September the twenty eighth at nine o'clock. Good luck. Right. 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 
Brandix, state your name. James Barbero. Uh, Mr. Barrera, before the court, on violation of probation for what was originally written threats to kill or injure. You understand that charge? Yes, sir. Judge Clark and his infinite wisdom and glorious hair. I don't know if you've seen Judge Clark's hair lately. It is magnificent. It is a mane <laughs> of luscious glory. It is locks of it's, it is glorious. All right. Mr. Barbera, you, you do qualify for a public defender. I'm going to appoint a public defender to represent you. When you see Judge Clark on September the 18th at 9 o'clock, tell him he's got a fan in Judge Van. Next step to your right, sir. Step on the X. Here you go. Say your name. Your name. Name? Mm -hmm. Christian Colon Torre. So you're for the court on a failure to appear for a grand theft charge in front of Judge Stevenson and a failure to appear for a domestic violence battery charge in front of me. You understand those charges? Mm. No, 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 English. Yeah. Could he speak English earlier? He understood when I asked him. I said, you need to tell me that it don't matter. He's held without bond for Judge Stevenson, September 28th at 9 o'clock. My court date is August the 29th at 9 o'clock. It's 25000 But he understood all that. Buena suerte. Oh, and Judge, he does need an interpreter. I looked back at his old first appearance. He doesn't speak English. Next. Step on the red State your name. Mr. Chambers, before the court on a violation of probation, what was originally possession of marijuana more than 20 grams in front of Judge Clark. You understand that charge, sir? Yes, sir. You indicate you're going to hire your own attorney or represent yourself. Is that how you're going to proceed? I have a lawyer, sir. Excellent. Clark. With his beautiful hair, he tells you without bond. Your court date is going to be September the twentieth at nine o'clock. Good luck. The court date is September the twentieth at nine o'clock. No bond. Next, step on the T. Next, step on the red X. You can sign for it. You can get it. State your name, sir. Charlotte. Your name? Campbell. Mr. Campbell, you're for the court on a violation of probation for a domestic violence battery out of Fort Walton Beach. You understand that, sir? No, sir. Washington County. Well, why does it say? Hold on. Okay. The warrant's out of Washington County, but for some reason the paperwork's at Fort Walton. Yes, okay. Sir. No, you're right. It's 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 Wash. It's Chifley. Judge Peel, in his infinite wisdom, has requested the honor of your presence. He's asked us to hold you. We're going to get you back to Chifley as quickly as possible, so you can get this in front of Colby and you can get this resolved. Return date's going to be September. Oh, September first. You'll be long gone by then. I'm. I have confidence. Otherwise, Miss Fanbro can walk you back up there. She loves going up to Chifley. Step to your right to the chick. You don't like the Chipley? I don't think I've ever been there but once for a cheer competition. Ready. That's it. <laughs> Ready? Cheer? Don't do that. State your name. Anthony Long. Time that Mr. Long, you're for the court charter in state warrant. It's a failure to appear for a battery charge out of Polk County. You understand that, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, sir. Polk County has requested the honor of your presence. I'm going to hold you for Polk County. Ask the Bay County Sheriff's Office to coordinate your transport back down there. I'm going to give them a little longer. I'm going to give them until September the 8th to come get you. Can you? Can we do a warrant? This has been going on for like six months, and, it's, and we're going to take it, it to trial. We've done a warrant. Oh, I mean, can I do a bond? I was on no. bond this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, but you failed to appear, <laughs> allegedly. Right. I was here. I would have never missed, though. You what? I would have never missed otherwise. We were coming from 1,200 miles. We've been dealing with that court case for about six months. Only reason I missed is because I was here. Otherwise, I would have never missed. Like here is in taking other charges? I was in this. 
I was in this county jail on charges. Yes, sir. Yeah. I was you know, the single worst that. reason for missing court in the history of missing court is because I was in jail somewhere else. Uh, yeah. See you right in front. Say your name, sir. James Gray. Mr. Graham? Yes, sir. You're before the court for in state warrants for grand theft, possession of anti shoplifting countermeasures times two, and retail theft out of Okaloosa County. You understand that, sir? Yes, sir. There's two different warrants with those charges, and they've got a composite bond of 6000 on you. Can you post that? Uh, yes, sir. My lawyer already paid the bondsman, so I'm just waiting on the bondsman to make it. Perfect. Good deal. So, once we get notice that you've got the bond settled, we'll release you, okay? Yes, sir. I'm going to give a return date that's not going to matter to you because it's here in Bay County. It's September the 1st, but you and your lawyer over there will have a court date in, a, I guess, in Okaloosa. Yeah. So, once you get the posted bond, we'll let you go, and then it's up to you and your attorney to make your court date over in Okaloosa County. When the light comes on, sign. Red X, sir. Stage name. First name is Jane. Last name is Bastion. Mr. Bastion, you're in the court on a in state warrant. It's a violation of probation for what was originally sale of controlled substance within a thousand feet of a school in Broward County. You understand that, sir? Yes, sir. Judge Duffy has requested the honor of your presence. We're going to honor that request, hold you for Broward County. Ask the Bay County Sheriff's Office to coordinate your transport back down south so you can get this taken care of. The return date here is going to be September the 8th, but you should be long gone by then. Good luck, sir. Step to your right to the T. When the light comes on, sign for your copy. Red X. What's your name? I decided you need a walk up song. I have a. Never mind. What, uh, I want to know what is your walk-up music? <laughs> no, Crazy, train? Crazy train? Crazy uh, train? You're on the record. Dine. 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 Thank you Mr. Very Landrum, much. you're before the court on a fugitive from justice warrant out of Gwinnett County, Georgia, for violation of probation. You understand that, sir? Yes, sir. There is very little you and I have to discuss today, but the main thing is this. The only issue before us here in Florida is whether or not you are the Rodney Landrum that Gwinnett County is looking for. If you agree that you are, it's in your best interest probably to sign the waiver of extradition, putting them on the clock to come get you. Otherwise, you're entitled to sit on a on dead time and wait for them to go through the process of getting a governor's warrant between Georgia and Florida. And Governor DeSantis is kind of busy right now, so I'm just telling you that that could take a while. You check, make sure the name is correct here. Yep, that's me. All right, buddy. So step to your left. Sign the five copies of the waiver extradition by video in my presence. I'm going to put a return date of September the 18th. But the truth of the matter is. As long as they let us know that they are really coming to get you, we will hold you for a little longer than that. Keep going. So I should be expecting transport within 30 days. Give 30 day. days. Thank you, sir. You take care, sir. A lot of pages. Everybody it is a lot of pages. It's ridiculous. Right. Sign where the green light is. We're killing trees. Next. I think we'd be able to do everything electronically still. So. Say your name, sir. All right. My person. How you doing, Mr. Baker? How you doing, sir? Mr. Baker, they've got you scheduled. I can't tell you when it's scheduled for. I can just tell you that they really want to come get you. And they have let us know that they are on the way, okay? So I'm going to give a return date of September the 18th. And I'm assuming, knowing what happens when we assume, 
I'm assuming that's enough time, Ms. Bambro. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck, sir. Right, step on the T. When the light comes on, sign next. Red X, sir. State your name. Austin Gill. Gill, you pull the court to possession of THC and possession of paraphernalia. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork, advised of your rights. Yes, sir. I, also, I, I talked to the young lady that was arrested with you earlier. She was not having a good day. Uh, Is everything okay? okay? She's fine. She's fine. She's just not, she's not real happy with her circumstances in life right now. But that's okay. I wouldn't expect her to be. You can understand that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the services of the public defender's office. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? I'm not saying that she's questioning all of her life decisions, but she might be questioning a couple. Something you might want to think about moving forward. Deputy Criminal History. Control substance in Georgia in 23. Bond set at 5,000 on the THC, 1,000 on the paraphernalia with the random UAs. Court date's going to be September the 14th at 9 o'clock. Good luck, sir. Step to your right to the T. Next. You're riding the circuit. We have two cases. And they are 23 CR 22 and 23 CR 26, both styled the state of Texas versus Rebecca Foyle. Am I pronouncing it per correctly? Like aluminum foil, yes. but it's F O Y I L. And in each of these cases, uh, th these cases, you, you're charged with aggravated uh, kidnapping in 22 and aggravated robbery in 26. Both of these are first degree yeah. felonies. You have pleaded uh, guilty earlier. Three sentence reports have been. It's just on the aggravated robbery. Too. I believe one case is going to be dismissed. That's right? correct. The yeah. Kidnapping. The aggravated robbery, uh, 23 CR 26, you pleaded guilty to, and as part of this agreement, CR 22 will be dismissed. A pre-sentence report has been prepared if the parties had an opportunity to review it. Are there any uh, corrections or changes to it? Not from the French, right? Not from the state. Level. Then it's made a part of the record uh, for uh, all purposes. And the agreement here is whatever sentence you might exceed a cap of 10 years in prison. So let's look at our options. No less than five, no more than 10 years confinement if the court assesses flat prison time. You can be placed on deferred or unadjudicated probation up to 10 years. And I don't believe regular probation is an option in this case. That's correct. Right. That's correct. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, defense, you may go forward. You know, this was an unfortunate set of circumstances. Uh, for, for the I'm victims. I'm not going to try to <laughs> do that, minimize Ms. Foyle's participation in this, these offenses. Uh, she's played guilty. Another court problem is do the pre sentence report where she's Adam Braid served. Um, reported involvement in the cases. I've explained to her, I explained to her prior to her entry of her guilty plea, the law of parties based upon what the state has represented to me to be the facts. I believe that she would be exposed as a, or at least a party to the offense of the conviction. She understands that and her guilty plea is predicated upon that theory of uh, parties as well as what the state might have been able to prove that controverts her version of the events. Um, and, part, and speaking with her, I know that she's generally remorseful, or at least appears to be, to my estimation. She knew and uh, is considered the victim to be a friend at one point, at least. 
And um, as part of the plea agreement, she stands ready to cooperate with the state and the prosecution of the remaining defendants and uh, up to and including uh, testifying against them. And What's the status of those? That's true of whether the court gives her probation or not. We have from the, the other the, young lady in the case has pled guilty to the offense to the aggravated kidnapping. And uh, the other two gentlemen that are charged are uh, gentlemen uh, pending. Yes, well, being kind. That pending. term is used loosely. Yes, if sir. I'm reading this correctly. Yes, sir. Individuals. But that's where it stands, Your Honor. I think she's in a position, I think. To... When is it set for trial? Lacey. It's not. Right. Those, those other two are not. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't her cases. Uh, who are the co defendants? Yes. Of course. Okay. This, these were the indictments came up in February of this year, right? Yes, sir. So it's, it may not, it may just be said close to the end of the year. How long have you been in jail since February? 16th. October 2nd. From Adams. On the back side, there's a, another codependent man. I just saw. October 23rd for Franklin. That's it. Yeah, right. The other ladies set for sentencing on August. Is that Weatherall? Yes, she's set for sentencing. Yes, on the 31st. Yes. Weatherall's the 31st. The, uh, the two male defendants are set for trial in October. You know, it shouldn't come as a surprise to the court to know that uh, methamphetamine was involved with these cases, with these cases as well. And the spoils struggled with that. Uh, and again, I'm not proffering this as an excuse, but I think that it frames sort of who she is or where she's at, it, um, substance abuse issues. And should the court, I think there's a substance abuse assessment should be in the PSI, that uh, that should be part of the uh, probation regimen, um, drug testing, and whatever programs the probation department seems fit to address. And then she said she's been in jail for six months. She's um, regained her sobriety, I think, the lucidity in her thinking. Perhaps it's returned somewhat to where she can fully appreciate what she's looking at and where she wants to go with the rest of her life. She does have familial support. And two individuals present in the court on her behalf, such that I think that uh, that would be some additional help with her being able to perform with the conditions of probation should the court assess her um, for GK probation. And of course, with the first, she's, this is the first degree 3G offense. She's facing some pretty severe consequences as she gets, uh, gets revoked. So I think she appreciates that as well. We're Conform to probation. Stan, did you see the interested parties? The victim in this case has asked that they spend time in prison, and I adjusted their roles by giving them a limited amount of exposure to prison time. But I still think with this gentleman losing vision in his left eye and still having problems with his body, I, I think that, that prison time is more appropriate than probation in this case. You pleaded guilty to this, which is uh, intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly causing bodily injury to another by kicking and hitting him about the head and body with hands and feet of the defendants 
and a deadly weapon, namely steel toe boots, were used. I, and again, I advise you the law parties. I know. I want to know in the law parties to articulate what part you played in this other than watching, because that's not the way I read this probable cause affidavit, but but I'm this you, far from sentencing you. I'd like you, you to, I want to hear it out of your mouth, but watching something happen is an inhumane thing to do, but that doesn't mean that you are culpable of a crime unless you had a duty to intervene and that's what you're saying all you did was watch something happen she said she disarmed uh, I'm, i want her to speak please she didn't have to but i'm about to sentence her i don't remember i don't know i can't say that i did and she's going to testify for the state I didn't. No. She said she's available too, and I don't know. I don't that think she has anything. She no, doesn't no, sound. She's, a, a, she's not volunteering anything she at saw, all, except she saw the other individual saw. So what? I mean, that's a terrible thing to stand by and do nothing while somebody is being beaten. But that's not what the probable cause statement says. We did. Do you have steel toe boots on? I don't even own boots. Stephen Adams. I, I'm not saying you had steel toed no. boots on. I think that was what was your sign. Mm -mm. It doesn't say she has steel toed boots. Well, Somebody did, or, did. Or, two, or two people did, but but she still had an active role in this. She has limited She. She also is expressing limited forthrightness. I can't, I can't change the facts. I, 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 you, you, you can't speak. Reasons. I'm asking her to speak, and you're doing the best you can. But I never hit him. I disarmed him. This could have been capital murder. What are you crying about? I'm, I feel sorry for the victim. I do too. Well, you were part of this. No. You didn't feel sorry for him at the time he was being stomped to death, almost to death, or waterboarded, which is which somebody going through that believes they are about to drown, which is, according to authorities, about the most desperate feeling you can go through as a human. You're just gonna sit there and weep and and say you didn't do anything? Is that is that your final answer? That's how you're gonna to respond to this. You did what? What'd you do? I hit him. Mm -hmm. What they said. That's what this says. What else? Why would you do something like that to somebody who was defenseless? That's just mean. That's just mean. And I, I go back again to methamphetamine, Your Honor, and I don't proffer that as an excuse, but it does change people's perceptions and judgments and empathy. I wish every day I could apologize to him. I really do. Well, that 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 makes it well. No, that undoes that that. Un, it doesn't even you can undo like the terrible like act that he had to go through.
would you read these reports when people are involved with uh, drugs? The the reports that are made, everybody has a different story. Between I don't remember anything to everybody else was doing it, and it's like a just a a drunken stupor in a, people attempting to explain what they had just done. That's what happens. That's what I read all the time. And that's what drugs do. Hurt people. People are left to die. And then the folks are called upon the carpet to explain their actions and everybody points to the next person. There's absolutely no sense of, of responsibility. No, August third first. Let me just uh, just a, a a small tidbit of what the victim. As soon as he got to their apartment, they began to punch and kick him. He had a room there, didn't he? Was he living there? Yes, sir. White advised he woke up to Franklin and Adams dragging him against his wheel back to an apartment, which was the kidnapping part. The victim stated they picked him up by his ankles and his wrists. As soon as he got into their apartment, they began to punch and kick him. This occurred in the living room. All four, Franklin, Adams, Foyle, Weatherall, were kicking and punching him. His face was being stomped on. Foyle was kicking him as she was holding her little dog because she actually dropped the dog on him while she was kicking him. You can't make this thing. I mean, now the dog is a witness. Yeah, well, I don't think here, the dog you're, was you're, sick. You're, you're whole, no, yeah. She's taking care of the dog while you're helping beat someone almost to death. You, you can't play it both ways. You can't be an animal lover and then try to kick, try to be a part of killing somebody. That's just terrible. That's schizophrenic in life kind of a thing. They were laughing at him while he was being beat. All right, uh, stay. What are you asking uh, for the 10 years, Judge? All fine. I think doing and her limited criminal history, but her part in it, I think that's fair. Miss Hoyle, uh, what would you like to say, please? So I really am. I really am, and I've been working on being a better person in the past few months. I would really appreciate a chance to prove that I can do this, a chance to be with my kids, and she just apologize to Bob. I know I can't do it personally, but I'd like her to know I'm sorry. But two other things. I don't think she said any write ups that she's been in jail. Mr. Laird made some other information. That was my knowledge. I don't think she said any write ups. And uh, she's not eligible for shock probation. These are three jail teams. No. <laughs> Want to be better. Hmm? I have no idea. At the end of the day, uh, I'm just going to summarize this. 
it doesn't matter what you want. It's the choices you actually make. Okay. What they love making better choices. And you, how old are you now? Twenty eight. Mm -hmm. And your criminal history says here. Uh, This uh, 10 days in jail last year for hindering apprehension or prosecution yes, out of Scurry County? Yes, sir. I'm not familiar with that. 254 counties, and I thought I knew them all, but I didn't, I didn't know Scurry County is in Texas. Uh, Texas. Where? Oh, Texas. Yeah, it's Scurry? Is mm -hmm. the name of it? No, I, I never heard of that. I'll be darned. I uh, thought I was familiar with all the names. Anyway, what was that all about? I lied about my ex-boyfriend's name. <laughs> to the police? Yes, sir. So it was, you got in trouble for being dishonest? Yes, sir. Okay. And then here, uh, last year on March, uh, May of May 21st, family assault. What was that about? Got in a fight with my roommate. She said I <laughs> Who's your? Who was your roommate? Who was your room? Her name is Charlotte Wade. Mm -hmm. was... Okay. So, oh, oh, now what did you say now? She said you hit her? What did you do? We argued and I grabbed her by her arm. That was it? Just grabbed her by the arm? Well, you pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 30 days in jail for that. For grabbing her by the arm. It cost her pain to do it. I know, but truly, grabbing people by the arm don't doesn't normally result in a criminal charge unless it's done in a way that's possible. Right? Yes, sir. I'm thinking. AA in jail, and I plan on seeking mental help. I'm taking AA in jail, and I was why? Um, because I have the substance abuse issue. You have uh, you, a substance abuse issue. Um, I've already been looking into recovery, and I'm plan on getting my mental health evaluated if I get the chance to get out of probation. Just want to try to be better. Sorry, move. That gets everyone's attention. See, the problem with all of this, Ms. Boyle, is, is, is believing what you have to say. It's believing what you have to say. And, and, the pre-sentence report that was introduced into evidence here. Yeah, I've been waiting on on you to resolve it. And <clears throat> during the pre-sentence interview, the defendant, you, told the pre-sentence officer, the probation officer, she, you did not take part in harming the victim, nor did you have any plans to rob him of anything. You we're in a back room getting high with another person, another female, and only knew what took place because your mother told you about it after hearing about it. That's what she that's what you told. That's what you told the probation office officer. You lied then or you lied now. But the the report shows more culpability than you told the probation officer, who is an officer of this of, of me. She, yes. uh, she, he or she, it was uh, Candy Banks. She is a representative of this court. Yes. And so you lied to her, you lied to me. That's no way to resolve anything. 
but we got we had the reports and the investigation and it showed you clearly took part you may not have been the most culpable of them the men looked like they were men the males looked like they were uh, the leaders of this group but you certainly didn't help the victim and you took part in harming yes but it doesn't do yeah you know, your cooperation and help does little when you say certain things here in this report to the probation office which you had no reason to lie but you did and and then if you were to cooperate and be called as a witness the state would have to say yeah, to the jury this is she's not i know what she's saying here under oath that's self-serving here in some degree that she had little to do and that they had to do with this but but then she lies so your effectiveness in doing something good out of this is evaporated which is what we can we learn what terrible web we weave when we attempt to deceive we learned that when we were little kids it's terrible. This is a terrible thing. This is torture of another human being. Anything else? Oh, yes. If not, I'm going to find Ms. Morrill, you have pleaded guilty today voluntarily. You are mentally competent to do so. You understand the consequences of pleading guilty. There's sufficient evidence supporting your guilty plea to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this first degree felony aggravated robbery. I am following this agreement. You were hereby sentenced to confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of 10 years. The judgment shall show an affirmative finding that a deadly weapon, mainly steel toe boots, was used in the commission of this offense. This is terrible. And you're, it, you could have been here with, uh, with the court or a jury making two choices, either life without parole or the death penalty, because that was what almost happened. That would have been the only two choices. It's a shame. Um, but after all of this happens, at the end of this, you put an exclamation point on it by now to the probation office. You, which put, really takes this out of the court's hands of decisions. That that negates a lot of the options I will consider. Because acceptance of responsibility never happened until just a few minutes ago. Which doesn't help you and you become little help to the state in its prosecution if they were going to call you, yes. which is where your help and the wiggle room that the court could use in fashioning a sentence lighter, but you don't deserve a lighter thing. Yes. You deserve, you were responsible for this. And the other ones, I'm sure their state's going to ask for the for life on those, and these are dis, disturbing sets of facts. So you could have done better if you'd have just made uh, better choices along the way. Up and even after arrest, you should have made better choices. Um, uh, uh, there's a dismissal on one of these. The bailiffs uh, will be able to take care of that. Sarah Bramblett. Sarah. Where is she? Make um, Miss Harrison aware 
um, that um, I'm putting you back on the September 1st calendar because um, Mr. Hill, you know, requested um, counsel and we always do allow he people to He requested counsel. counsel already two months ago and it was already delayed. This is just a stall and delay tactic by him. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing's gonna come of this. He still has not sent anything for his child or has done anything of the sort. I am now, doing I believe, this by myself. Okay, and I'm sorry, but I, I believe, I'm, I'm not sure, I think this was the case that I got word on is that we do have an application now. Is that correct, Mr. Johnson? Judge, um, first and foremost, I'm not attorney Johnson. I'm from his office. He's in trial oh. in Cobb County. I just want oh, to be okay. sure about that. Um, there is a case in, in Clayton County. Um, Attorney Gresham represents the uh, DHS department. Um, we've got a hearing coming up on that. And um, he did hire Attorney Johnson for that, this, and to file a petition for legitimation. So it's not a, it's not a delay tactic. We are not going to legitimize someone who physically abuses the mother of their child and who has never been in their okay. child's life. That's not going to happen. Now, Ms. Ms. Harrison, I just want to make sure you understand that is up to the court and you would have to present evidence because I have it. We, we, yeah, we can't prevent um, a legitimation, but obviously if you have the information, yeah. then He's that's never even what we watched him for an hour. Okay, so that that would need to be presented and, you know, and it would move forward. But, um, you know, but legitimation is the right of, of every father. So he's not going to um, get it. Okay, well, that's that's going to be between um, you and the court. But the thing that I want to make sure happens before my September 1st calendar, because I am granting the continuance on the um you know, with the um, understanding the summons that expert. Uh, Mr. Hill is going to go into Clayton County and get that DNA and take care of the matters that have been outstanding all this time, because you can you can hear the frustration from Ms. Harrison, and I understand completely. So we need to get this done. And she's already signed uh, an arrest warrant. It's my, I, you know, I'm the one holding it up now because I have not signed it because I'm trying to give Mr. Hill the opportunity to do the right thing for his child. So um, if you could just relay that uh, to Mr. Johnson yes, so that we can make sure that that happens and it needs to happen in a, in a timely fashion. Okay. Um, so he still hasn't done anything by the 18th. So he still gets away with it. He's still he's not going to get arrested. I'm not going to I'm not going to say that he's he's getting away with it. Whenever I see that things are taking a, a step forward, I'm going to try and let things move forward because, you know, you have to understand, Miss Harrison, it is going to be the quickest method for you. If we put him in jail, that is not going to get money for your child. It's going right, to but delay he's not things. doing anything anyway. So he might, and he's never going to. He's applying for legitimation, so he doesn't mm -hmm. have to. But he's he doesn't even. But you have to understand, he can't apply for legitimation without answering this. You know, the, I mean, the it, the court is not going to let him have his way while he continues to not. How can you apply for for legitimation if you haven't done the DNA test? So he's he's the one months. that's gonna. Hmm? Oh, I understand. I understand, but I you know, but I also know that Mr. Hill doesn't know the way the law works. He cannot ask for a legitimation without de doing DNA testing. That's just common sense. Well, so he can't do test. one without the other. The DNA test is done. Um, mm -hmm. he decided not to go and he lied to me and said that he did, but they found, mm -hmm. um, his DNA from another case that he had. That is correct. So it's already proven. Mm -hmm. Um, and also is it legal? Like is, is somebody, a bystander able to come into this meeting? Because I see his deadbeat father w here on the, the, uh, okay. So we're home. not, we're, we're not going to go there, Ms. Harrison. I've, I've already kind of explained exactly what we need to know. Um, I just would like for both of you to, or rather for Mr. Uh, Johnson to be here on September the 1st so that we can move things forward, but I'm not going to have a, 
a, a full hearing at this point in time. Okay, so you know, so, so nothing's that's really changing. Not right now. Still no support. Still no him doing anything for his child. Still nothing. September. I have to still do everything. September the first is the day. Okay. And and I can and I'm I'm not going to promise you that everything is going to change on that day, but clearly, if he has the money to hire counsel, then I do expect that he is going to begin paying his child support. You know, He's pretty not. close to September first. Once we get everything else done, so um, if you could just relay that to um, Attorney Johnson, I would uh, appreciate it. Okay. I have a question. He I'm already filed for him. continuance already, and um, that was granted. But I see it mm -hmm. specifically on the paper that you guys send that they're not allowed to file for continuance, and this is a second continuance. He's not mm -hmm. doing anything for any benefit of my child. Mm -hmm. He's delaying and he's stalling, and now he has his family in on it, and now he has some attorney in on it. This is mm -hmm. like I, I, I can't. Like what I, else I understand. Have? Believe me, I, I understand your frustration, Miss Harrison, and it, I know it doesn't seem like it to you, but having done this hundreds of times, I know that this is the quickest way to get to money. When uh, you know, I know that you want to see him arrested, but money going to the court to pay for his probation is not going to help your child. So he's never going to pay that. And he's never going to watch his child. I know that he's nine okay. months now. He's never done anything. He's not going I, to. And I, I understand, you, you know, when somebody doesn't want to take care of a child, you don't have them take care of your child. Don't demand that. What I am demanding from him is the money. That's what's going to be a, a help to you. You don't need him to do, you know, care for your child and so forth, because he's already making the allegation that things that his family did for the children. And they never the do. Child his family doesn't is, even talk to me because about this. I, I, I understand. But what I'm trying to tell you is when somebody behaves that way, that's not the person. If he doesn't have the personal commitment to take care of his child himself, that's not the person that you want taking care of your child. I don't want him to because he has okay. beat me before. And he is also not going to get legitimiz legitimation. He doesn't even know my child's middle name. He's never even watched him for an hour. He's never done anything. Okay. I understand. I understand. Believe me, I do. I know it might not feel that way right now, but, you know, I want you to calm down. We're going to get to the, to the end of this. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. Um, Attorney Johnson's office. I think you were trying to tell me something. Judge, we're I'm, I'm we're we're just here trying to get the situation resolved. He, they're just right. trying. Not, to I know that. Not paying a dime and. Judge, judge but, I, I don't. I, you know, I can't. I'm not fixing to go back and forth. I wanted mm -hmm. to make the announcement, right. for Attorney Johnson. Could we be excused at this point? Absolutely. I'm going to excuse everybody as well as any family members um, to uh, Mr. Hill so that we can move forward with our calendar. Okay, you, you're all it was excused. Good seeing you again. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, um, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, read.